This is called the next step, and what I want to show you how to do is take everything the JK cabinets make and kick it up a notch. The whole point here is creativity. If you're just putting cabinets on the wall, it's boring. This is what contractors do, and there's nothing wrong with that, except if you do it over and over and over again and expect different results and higher sales, it's not going to happen. Valances, everybody knows what a valance is. We're stretching, we're spanning between two areas. A couple ways we can get there. This is one way that I've elected to do. This is all JK stuff. Now, their longest valance is what, 72 inches? 60 is the standard. I can get up to 12 feet. Now, how did I do that? Well, number one, I took their long valance and I cut it in half. I built boxes on either side of the cabinets so I could push the valance in closer. And then in behind it, I separated it. But in this particular job, I went a step further. What I did is I took a panel, a refrigerator panel, and I had my guy cut an arch in it. Now I have that raw piece of wood on the bottom. So my guy took a tall filler and he cut a 32nd of an inch strip off the edge of the filler that's finished. And we glued that up underneath the valance. You, you need a pretty good installer to be able to put this stuff together. Before I even get back to the client with the final design, I'll go to my installer and say, you know, what do you, what do you think it's going to take to do this? A good rule of thumb is everything takes a day. Figure it's going to take a day to make that balance. Other areas. This is the typical pantry you find in a home. Uh, you know, bifold doors, nice, clean, pretty, but it's boring. Um, they want to put pantries in there because it'd look pretty. Well, I could have just put full height pantries in there and made it all pretty, but I decided no. I have a thing for painting the interior of things black. <laughs> okay. It makes it jump. Now, here what I did is I put 84 inch cabinets in. You know, we have, we have really tall, so there's nine foot ceilings, but you can do this with 84 inch cabinets and leave just a little bit of space up there. Or you can put three small pantries in and leave the center one down a little bit and pull it forward. So what's happening? You know, you're getting this, these, these different definitions of, of lines. Anytime you create more lines, it's more interest. Refrigerator cabinet. And if you look closely, I cheated. I cut the cabinet into the, into the side panels. <laughs> so that's a 36 inch upper with three inch fillers on the side. I just cut the cabinet in. Now I have a 33 inch opening for my fridge. And you have to be careful with refrigerators. Uh, I teach a class at the, at the community college up in Edmonds, and we spend a whole hour on just talking about appliances. Refrigerators are the biggest bane of our industry. Uh, they now, there's no standard. The door swings, where the hinge pin is, where the pivot point is. Uh, uh, I won't name names, but some refrigerators require two and a half inches of space on the other side of them for ventilation. If you don't put that space, let's say you make a nice tight garage for the fridge and you don't put that space in there, the fridge will fail. And guess what? The warranty won't cover it because you put the fridge panels in too tight. Sometimes I'll use two different cabinets on these fridge cabinets, like two 12s or something like that, so I can take one out. If my client doesn't have a budget for a new fridge, I'll design for the new fridge and I'll figure something out to go above the fridge and they can go down to some used appliance store and, and buy a, 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 what is it, the Harvest Gold refrigerator and take it down to the local Earl Scheib and for $49.95 he will paint that fridge any color you want. Here's your typical kitchen cabinet over the fridge, good for Christmas decorations and liquor. Can't reach anything. And of course cereal boxes which you have to move all the time. My solution to this, take the doors off. Buy some of the BP panels from here. Put it inside the cabinet. Pin nail them in, that's all you have to do. And a couple of lights up inside of the cabinet. Now it looks like something. Limitations shouldn't be your limitations. They're just limitations that you, you get to work with it. You get to play with it. It only, it only makes you more creative to come up with a solution to make it work. This is the speed that the designers think they're moving. This is the speed that contractors think you're moving. You know, a designer can't work fast enough for the contractor, for the installer, or for the client in some cases. This is what the contractor thinks you're designing. This is what he's going to see is a truckload after truckload after truckload of cabinetry. And this is how many people he thinks he's going to need to install what you've just drawn. You know, I don't know how many of you run into the situation, well, 
this isn't what I thought you were, were, were designing when you designed this. And this is all about communications. Everything begins with a plan. You really have to think about everything you do in design, form, follows, function. The room must work well first, then you make it look good. This is where we started with this job on the left, and this is where we ended up. Over the peninsula, or over a, an island hood, something different. Start off with just a hood liner. Just buy the hood liner that goes inside of the custom hood, two by four it to the ceiling, and then put all these moldings over it. By the way, everything in here is all JK cabinets. Every part and parcel in here. Multifunction appliances usually do only one of the two functions well. Case in point, microwave exhaust hood. How many have had a microwave exhaust hood and you boiled spaghetti and the front of your microwave is all fogged up? Well, why is that? Because the hood is no good. Well, it's not it's no good, it just isn't designed right. First off, the back of the hood is lower than the front. Well, what happens when smoke comes up here now? Where's it gonna go? Forward, okay. Of course, if they did it like this, then you'd have hot steam dripping on you. Yes, they have a 300 CFM fan in there, or a 400 CFM fan, cubic feet of air per minute, but they, they put this big mesh filter in front of it, which effectively cuts it down to 150 CFM. Then they have this ductwork. It's about the size of a hefty uh, Slurpee straw. Okay, and then I'm sure whoever installed it put a bunch of corners on it, so now it's like blowing through a straw and pinching it. It just doesn't work. The proper fan has a right size canopy, the right size fan, and the right size ductwork. The bigger the ductwork, the quieter the pan. I could come up with a million different ideas for hoods, but the whole thing is, is to think these things out and come up with something different. If your plans are different than everybody else's, you're gonna stand out. If you've spent more time with a client, you're gonna stand out. If you say, when the client walks in the door, do you mind if I talk with your contractor or seeing what, what his capabilities are so I can draw up to what he can do? Boy, what have you done? You've just set yourself apart. You've asked a question no one else is gonna ask. That's one thing that, that I've been pretty successful at is getting, getting, you know, if somebody walks in my door and calls me, I'm, I'm pretty guaranteed that I'll get a job. Now the irony of it is that I've been in this almost 33 years, I have never advertised. My business is all referrals, and the reason I get referrals is because I get hooked into the contractors, I get hooked into the, uh, to the designers. I have a party for all my clients when my, when my jobs are done. Just a little inexpensive thing, I go to Subway, buy one of these big long Subway sandwiches, bring a couple of nice bottles of wine, and we have a little, you know, hey look my kitchen's done and all the neighbors get invited. Toe spaces, it's like the fifth wall. The fifth wall is the ceiling, by the way, in case anybody doesn't know what that is, it's the forgotten area. The toe spaces are forgotten area. So what I've, what I've started doing, I've started to come up with some ideas for the toe space. Here's some more moldings. Look what I found in their molding. Turn it upside down and put one of those things on it. You've got a really interesting foot. Here's another one. Here's a keystone. You can cut it off so it finishes underneath you want, like we did here. Here's a cove molding, and all I did is I laid this on a saw flat and cut it straight. Now I can use a piece of cove molding, cut a box out of it. You notice the toe kicks? This is different. Everybody knows this is, this is a, I love, the, I love the name they put on this, Star 24. See the profile on that? You know what's interesting? You know what this molding is, this OG molding? I'm gonna show you something. You would have the perfect continuation of molding all across the bottom of any amount of cabinet you wanted to put in. This is how I think. I have, I rarely use anything the way it is intended. This is not, by the way, this is not a vanity. We added some wall cabinets. You can tell it's in the middle of the room. And this is what it ended up. This is actually a bar. And again, light balance. A cabinet that had, didn't have glass in the door. I put glass in the door by simply taking the center panel out, route it out. Then you can put any kind of glass in there you want or steel. This type of thing works really well, by the way, just as a side note, JK doesn't offer a straight appliance garage. So what I did here is I took a cabinet and just took the bottom off, or turned it sideways, took the door, cut the bottom off the cabinet and put a, and simply put a lift up hinge on it. That same, the same hinging system they have back here. Jack of all trades, master of none, you've all heard that. You can't do everything yourself. Try to be either the designer or the installer. Bathrooms, 
here's your, your traditional bathroom that you find in nicer homes. It's all painted white and has a big, huge mirror in it. Here's a sketch I did for the client, leaving the tub where it was and just kind of expanding and doing some suspended vanities. And this is the way it ended up. Now you're gonna notice some things here that aren't made by JK cabinets. Number one, a full height 12 inch vanity cabinet, 12 inch wide vanity cabinet. You know the curved front cabinet that they have that's 24 inches wide? They also make a flat front. All I did was cut that cabinet in half. Use one door on one side and one on the other. And I got really crazy. I hinged it on the bottom and put a basket on the door with some glass. So now it drops down, they can just throw things in. And also inside here, which I probably should have taken a picture, is a piece of wood that sits at an angle like this. And it has holes in it for her hair dryer, curling iron, and something else was in there. And there's outlets in the side. Because we're using vessel sinks, we don't need a whole bunch of width. And the beauty of this is if you use this type of cabinet with a vessel sink, you can now get wider drawers on the side. You don't have to contend with the little 12 inch wide drawers that are pretty much useless in a, in a, in a normal bathroom situation. Now this is a nice big bathroom, it helps. But same situation, notice there's no toe kicks on the cabinets. Here's how I did this. I took the toe kick and cut it off the cabinets. And where I have a big run of cabinets, where we're gonna have a lot of weight and a lot of stone on top, I'm gonna to support those and I drew this out. And I did pull the cabinets forward. I wanted a deeper countertop. See those mirrors? It's made out of three inch fillers. And what I did is I took a CM34 and I put it in the, in the front here and I had to miter the corners because there's no finished edges on it. This is a fun business. I always joke, anybody who's a designer, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. We've got the greatest job in the world. We're creative all day long. We're on a perpetual shopping trip. We spend other people's money and they pay us to do it. And what better job could you possibly have?